Hey all, and welcome back to Winter Olympics DS. Jet is no more. Well, he's technically still alive, but uh, he may as well not be after that fucking blowout of ego that he just experienced. But uh, yeah, I think we should address straight off the bat, this is being recorded post Video Game Awards 2019, and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, let, let's just say uh, the dream sort of like farted out and died roughly about an hour into that awards show. No smash, uh, nothing of that kind, like no really big Nintendo announcements apart from Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 DLC. And Sonic was there, uh, they played a clip of Sonic 1 in the background of the Green Day performance, so technically they fulfilled that Sonic is their quota. And Oh man, I uh, I would have been CV if it wasn't so funny, honestly. I know. I mean, from what I can tell, it seems like there might have been a reason why that might have occurred. So, shortly, I think just before the Game Awards, it was announced that the VFX studio that spent a lot of the time working on doing all of the sort of reading for the Sonic movie um, went under. So, uh, they're, they're kind of not in business anymore and obviously that's a lot of negative press because the whole deal of them um, t delaying the film was so that the developers wouldn't have to go through crunch and they'd all be fine. Developers, the animators would all be fine and uh, now they're out of a job and uh, yeah that is not okay. Um, I think somebody needs to sort that out, but uh, that's a separate issue. Uh, apparently that was horrible crunch as well, which is uh, yes. something that I can understand Jeff Keighley not wanting to address, because, uh, boy, we like our video games, but we also like to ignore the fact that people have to undergo terrible conditions for us to get them sometimes. Yes. So, uh, just while we're on the subject here, I have the uh, the winners of the uh, individual game awards here. So, I figure since uh, Cuba Rumpf is pretty winding and whatnot, and uh, we'll go through some of the same mini games again. I might as well just go down the list and address them and whatnot. You guys can decide whether or not you agree with them. Uh, best action adventure. It was between Borderlands 3, Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil 2, the remake, uh, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Sekiro took that one. Any opinions from you two? Uh, I mean, my vote went to Link's Awakening. I know, obviously, bloody ancient game, but I really enjoyed my time with that, and it's the only one that I played, so, you know, that's where my vote went. Whereas I haven't played any of those games, so I was just sitting back and watching, like, with mostly apathy there. Okay, uh, best game direction was between uh, Control, Death Stranding, Resi 2, Sekiro, and Outer Wilds. Not to be confused with Outer Worlds, and that went to Death Stranding. I played about two hours of Death Stranding and watched about nine hours, so I, I can agree with that. I think it's a pretty uh, well-made game in terms of direction and whatnot. Yeah, so you're clearly an expert on the subject. <laughs> Hell yes, I am. Uh, let's see. Best independent game was between Barbara is You, Disco Elysium, Katana Zero, Outer Wilds, and Untitled Goose Game, and Disco Elysium took that. I have watched Pat play a couple of hours of it. It is a pretty good game just in terms of, like, writing and the choices you make affecting the story, so I'm pleased that one. Uh, let's see. Role-playing game... Uh, I'll just do the winners now, otherwise we're going to be here all night. Uh, best role-playing game went to Disco Elysium, uh, beat out Kingdom Hearts 3, which is a... <sighs> that was my winner! Yeah, <laughs> in, in my heart it was my winner too, but uh, good on it for winning that. Uh, fresh indie game, which was presented by uh, Reggie fils himself with a pretty slick and classy speech. He's like He hasn't lost his touch at all, and uh, Disco Elysium's team one for that, so good on them. Uh, the Player's Choice uh, or Voice Award, which was, you know, just a vote specifically by the fans. Uh, Fire Emblem Free Houses took that. Hey! That, Death Stranding, uh, Jedi Fallen Order, and Smash Ultimate. So it wasn't like an easy category at all, but Fire Emblem still took it. Uh, best Performance, Matt Mickelson as Cliff for Death Stranding. I guess Norman Reedus must have been seething in his seat along with his funky fetus. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, best VR game, or AR game, was Beat Saber. So good on it. Uh, best ongoing game was Fortnite, uh, along with probably the most cringy of speeches of the night, where they tried to make it seem like some artistic, you know, 
forward thinker, you know, pioneer and such, even though they're dealing with, uh, you know, lawsuits for taking other people's dances and whatnot, so... Yeah. No, that wasn't the most cringy thing of the night. The most cringy thing of the night was that one, like, I think it was Apex Legends, the thing with Roger Craigsmith's character <sighs> talking to Jeff. <laughs> yeah, well... That was something a bit special. <laughs> best multiplayer game, Apex Legends. So, there you go. Uh, best mobile game, Call of Duty Mobile. I haven't played it, and I haven't really played any of the others in this category, so I'll, I'll just take your word for it, really. Uh, best sports slash racing game, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. Uh, good game, not a fan of all the... Uh, you know, the um, extra stuff Activision decided to put into it, yeah, for no. lack of a better word. Uh, yeah. Best family game, which you may as well have just called the best Nintendo game, really, because it's all Nintendo games yeah. here. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion 3, and that, that beat out Ring Fit Adventure, Mario Maker 2, Smash Ultimate, and Yoshi's Crafted World. Brilliant game. Richie and I have done a full playthrough of that. Uh, games for Impact. An amazing Muppet sketch with uh, Honeydew and Beaker. <laughs> and, and they made their own Goose Muppet as well for the uh, untitled Beaker game skit, which was amazing. How gratifying must that be to be like a new indie studio and have something as iconic as the Muppets basically pay tribute to you? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they've kind of come out of nowhere and kind of gotten a major love, and it's just awesome when you see things like that because it doesn't happen that often. I mean, it happens more now than it used to do, purely because, you know, the internet. Um, but it is wonderful to see. All right, uh, Greece won games for Impact there. That's a legitimately good game. It's not it's not the best start game out there, but I played it earlier this year, and it was a good time. And I, I, I kind of grew to like the art direction over time. Like, when I first saw it, I was a little bit put off because of, like, the... Like just the line art style and stuff it's not really the sort of thing I usually go to but it did grow on me and a lot of the environments in that game are beautiful Okay, fair enough mate, fair enough uh, Best action game, Devil May Cry uh, very worthy, I think Yeah. God bless Isuno for uh, jumping out of his chair like a madman and uh, memeing with the DMC is back thing again, God bless it uh, Best art direction went to Control, which I don't really agree with, but there we go uh, content creator of the year should have gone to me, but it went to Shroud instead. <laughs> no, I, I love that. I saw like the list of all the nominees, and I'm like, I don't know a single one of these people. <laughs> well, you realise that just means we're out of touch, right? No, it's the kids that are wrong, really. Uh, best strategy game again went to Fire Emblem Free Houses. I have my copy <laughs> sitting here, uh, ready to be opened. Um, basically, because we have a lot of bills to pay this Christmas, uh, presents aren't really going to be a thing. So I decided to just save that from my birthday. Day, so I'll have something nice to play on uh, Christmas morning. Yeah, I have to say, Fire Emblem Three Houses is a lot of fun. At some point, I am going to go back and play through the other two stories because uh -huh. I played through sort of the uh, the Black Eagles path and had a great time. And so I'm going to go back at some point and do Golden Deer and uh, Blue Lion. But uh, I've got those other things to do before then. Okay, okay. Uh, I meant to say okie okay, there, but words just weren't working for some reason. <laughs> uh, best audio design went to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, beating out uh, the likes of Death Stranding and Resident Evil 2. I still have my copy of Modern Warfare that I need to get around to playing. My brother got me that for me, like, a little while ago and it does look great from what I've seen I just need to get around to actually playing it properly for myself mm -hmm. uh, Smash Ultimate took best fighting game thank fuck it wasn't Jump Force that's all I'm saying <laughs> yeah. well I suppose the best fighting game is probably going to be Knuckles against the Sleaver here if we anything to go by <laughs> this is hilarious I've got to draw us back to this scene just for this Whee! <laughs> don't look down we'll float forever if we don't <laughs> that is some classic fucking slapstick I don't care <laughs> yikes ooh totally cringe there Sonic and Knuckles uh, best narrative went to Disco Elysium I probably would have given it to A Plague's Tale Innocence as I watch an LP of that and you know it's a story game you don't need to play the game to get the story but uh, congrats to Disco Elysium uh, Death Stranding took best score and music <sighs> again you know I would have given it to Kingdom Hearts 3 Ditto uh, but, but Kojima knows how to make a mixtape so kudos to him I suppose uh, best community support went to Destiny 2 I would have given it to Final Fantasy 14 personally and I haven't even played the fucking game um, and game of the year was Sekiro, which is not a bad choice, but it's one of those which is like, 
you have to sit back for a moment and be like, really? Yeah, that did kind of come out of nowhere, especially after like some of the hype from the other games that had won after awards. Yeah. And then it's just like, it's Sekiro wins. Like, okay. The other nominees were Control, Death Stranding, Resi 2, Smash Ultimate, and Outer Worlds. And for me, it would have gone to either, I think, Resi 2 or Smash Ultimate. But again, it's not a bad game, and we even have a quick look on Sekiro coming up soon, so look forward to that. Oh, you're going to get owned again. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, I do like the fact that it was Sekiro that won and not Death Stranding, because obviously it's an ongoing thing that everyone has, or at least, I mean, I know I'm, I have it, but a lot of other people do as well, with the Game Awards, because obviously Jeff Keighley has a very strong relationship, shall we say, with uh, Hideo Kojima. And so whenever there's a Hideo Kojima game or whatever in any of those awards, it's sort of just like, um... Is there a bit of bias here going on? Even if there's not, because yeah. I know it is pretty much, it is all community voted, it still has that element of, you just get suspicious because there's such a relationship there. And I think part of that is because obviously, in terms of us in the UK, we've just come off of a general election, which Don't has been. Don't start, was, I know. But. Outside of sort of talking about which way you vote, it was filled on both sides with a lot of misinformation and um, a lack of trust. And so, yeah, it, it continues through. We're very cynical, the Brits, right now. Well, why don't we not, really? But uh... <laughs> I mean, yeah, but particularly so now. Yeah, well, we're back here in Polar Straits, exploring another area, I suppose. And, oh, this is a very interesting... Portion. We'll get back to the Game Awards in a little bit. I just wanted to cover the awards themselves to start with. But uh, here we have a mini game. I believe is Mario exclusive flames. That right? Uh, yes, it is. Although I would be kind of interested to see like a mini Sonic if it's like the mini Sonic from fucking what is it? The level from CD. Like if you have one of them showing up. Yeah. This that would have been fun. But nah, the mini mushroom it is a Mario exclusive gimmick. Mm -hmm. So we basically just have to uh, slide across the ice, bouncing off stuff, or at least colliding with stuff that allows us to, you know, bring the friction to a complete halt. It's not like a, you know, Pokemon ice puzzle sort of thing. It is just it makes your control really slippery. Yeah. Which, you know, like, it, it's just a little gimmick to let you find some extra shit, so I'll roll with it. Although it's kind of funny watching this tiny Mario slipping all over the place. All right, what we got in here? Nothing, fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically fucking nothing, yeah, the white stones. Alas. But there is stuff in the other direction. I just had to go and get that because I would have felt bad if I didn't. I mean, that is fair enough. I mean, like, for the love of God, there's treasure chests everywhere. Just pick the damn things up, otherwise the collectathon nature that we all exhibit just goes just absolutely crazy. It does indeed, Rich. It does indeed. So here we have Wario and Waluigi. The lads! <laughs> the lads themselves. So this is another thing similar to how Silver and Blaze were partnered together. We've got another team face off against these two. And I think they're the only two pairs of characters that are laid out in the overworld like this, so which kind of makes sense. There's not that many team sports in this game. Okay. So it works. And also, I mean, to be fair, there's not that many kind of character matchups um, that you could have had. I mean, the only other one that I can really think of would have been uh, Yoshi and Birdo. Yeah, but Birdo's not playable here. Unfortunately, if you like Birdo as a character, someone might. <laughs> uh, I just love the way you trail off there. If you like Birdo, someone might. Um... <laughs> <laughs> We've got cover all ground that may or may not exist. <laughs> now, a lot of the characters on Sonic's side don't really... Actually, what am I saying? It's mostly just Sonic and Mario that don't talk. I, I think the point I was trying to make was if Wario and Waluigi did not speak, that's where most of their personality comes from, so they just have to do a lot of it through, like, pantomime or one or really. And while that would be fun, it wouldn't be nearly as effective as just making them, like really rude assholes. Oh my god, he's dabbing. Of course he's dabbing. It's Waluigi the Meme Lord. 
Well, with that sort of thing, you can kind of get away with one, maybe two mute characters. Because sometimes it does work well, like, if you think Mario's little skits in Super Mario RPG where he tries to explain what Bowser's done with the princess and stuff, and he's, like, doing the roleplay and that. That is funny, but when you've got a lot of characters like that, it just sort of becomes awkward. Oh, definitely. So they've kind of had to imp improvise a little bit. Even when that means the characters who usually just say their name, like Yoshi and the Chow, say translate it, and the other characters somehow understand. But yeah, <laughs> they made it work. I mean, I think that is sort of a thing that, thankfully, more games get right these days than get it wrong. Because it's like there is nothing wrong with having a silent protagonist or one sort of silent character, but the second you do start to add multiple, they just lack personality. And at that point, you then kind of just bored by the characters. It's something that got brought up as an issue somewhat in Astral Chain, because your protagonist was mute, but all the other characters talked. And unfortunately, in that game, purely because the character action game where everyone really likes to focus on character, your character ended up not having anywhere near the personality that your sibling did. Mm. And uh, that was a shame. But it works in things like, um, obviously, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It works in the Persona games. Works in uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses as well. Um, you just sort of need to have the right situation and the right number of other characters talking to get it to work. Well, with Persona, like, they work around that by having your character basically just green text in all their thoughts, which I find <laughs> kind of amusing. But... <laughs> yeah, let's get out of here. They'll be back, don't you worry. We haven't seen the last of Jesse and James over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they need like an extra year. She just stands in for me, Alf. <laughs> Not sure I like that. There was enough cosplay in 3D World. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we need like a cat Yoshi. That'd be fun. No. The brain is pushing it out of my mind. It will not accept it as a real thing. Look, look, okay, it's Yoshi who dresses up as a cat, or it's Wario who dresses up as a cat? Well, look, but, you see, here's the thing, Yoshi as a cat would be just too confusing. Wario as a cat, or Waluigi as a cat, would just be absolutely hilarious. If that's your idea of comedy, sure. <laughs> uh, we got a classic Zelda block pushing puzzle here, but I'm going to go back to the Game Awards now, we're going to talk about the announcements that were there. Probably the biggest was the Xbox Series X, which is apparently <laughs> the, the, the next Xbox console. Could afford me. It sounds like just an upgrade to the one, honestly. But this is like... Is it the first tower console we've had? The Wii? Yes. Uh, yeah, the Wii uh, is mostly standing upright and whatnot. Although, that, that can also go horizontally as well. This one seems like it's built like a PC more than anything, but uh, yeah. they didn't really show off much apart from like the new controller, uh, well, apparently yes, you can use it horizontally, thank you TheVerge.com for, uh, you know, making me less ignorant, um, Sasuna Saga Hellblade 2, uh, if there was any game that was going to get a sequel, I didn't think it would be this one, but uh, no. we, we had Sasuna herself uh, chanting loudly and viciously at the camera, so there we go, uh, Bravely Default 2. Bravely second get shot on. This is the real also, sequel. Yeah, Tom, just want to say it's Senua's saga, not Sasuna. I was getting a bit confused there. Well, well you are absolutely right. There's no S there. I don't know what the fuck I was reading. <laughs> uh, Godfall, um, it's a game. Uh, PlayStation 5 has its first game, and it is indeed Godfall, a third person fantasy looter slasher focused on melee. Combat. <laughs> Ignore me here, I'm trying, it's just hard to control it on the ice. <laughs> well, that's what this uh, off topic stuff is for. Prologue, which is apparently a forest game from the people behind PUBG, and that was about it. Uh, Ruined King, a League, of, a League of Legends story, Ghost of Tsushima uh, had some more uh, focus. Uh, Final Fantasy VII had another trailer, which wasn't super exciting or anything, but the game still looks good. Uh, we had a behind the music segment for Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, Gears Tactic had a world premiere. The Wolf Among Us 2 from Telltale, who apparently have uh, survived dying long enough to... Uh, well, let's just say crunch is probably prevalent there. 
uh, let's see, Fast and Furious Crossroads was uh, the biggest game, the final announcement of the night. And oh, I was seething during that one, I can tell you what. I'm not surprised. So this was just a big list of essentially fucking nothing, if I'm being honest. Yeah, well, I will read this and be happy. Knuckles lives on Angel Island, an island that floats in the sky. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Um, slightly better news brief. Um, obviously, as part of the Olympics, you get the torch relay. So, celebrity torch bearers for the uh, 2010 Winter Olympics included Arnold Schwarzenegger, Steve Nash, Matt Lauer, Justin Morneau, Michael Bublé, Bob Costas, Shania Twain, and hockey greats including Sidney Crosby, Wayne Gretzky, and the captains of the two Vancouver Canucks teams that went to the Stanley Cup Finals, Trevor Lindlin, Linden and Stan Smill. Okay. I don't know any of those people, so... You, you probably could have just said, like, Sonic and Tails won medals, and I would have believed it more. So, so Tom, just to clarify, you don't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is? Okay. I wasn't listening to the whole list, all right. <laughs> I mean, I'm also slightly judging you for Michael Bublé and Shania Twain. Okay, a lot all right. <laughs> That's a different thing. I may have been <laughs> tweeting at the time. May have been tapped out. Rude. Look, okay, I get that people who have, like, office jobs and that dick around on their phones instead of working, but come on, your job is literally to watch a video game here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I got a crystal while you were dicking around, so some of us are doing the work. That's past you. That doesn't, you can't take the credit for what you did in the past. What have you done for me lately? Um, He's talking right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I showed up. I actually woke up today. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's kind of shit because I was ill yesterday and uh, we had to cancel a session because of it. And here I am, not putting in 110%. <laughs> yeah, you got to make up for it. you got to do more today to <laughs> kind of cover your losses. <laughs> I know. All right, we've got another one of these. News brief. Mario can pal up and transform. I mean, he is Big Mario right now, so he must have, like, kept a mushroom in his pocket for when he goes to the Olympics and he needs to be normal size. <laughs> Doesn't that count as doping? Um, pretty much, yeah. Although, to be fair, some of the fever sports do have power-ups, so is this like the alternate universe Olympics where you're encouraged to take as many drugs as you can? <laughs> well, only for those specific events, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like if there was like a special final exhibition match in like the last day or something, and it's like, just like, inject whatever you like and just make it as fun <laughs> as possible. <laughs> you know what? Let, let's just have fun today, girls. Let's just put the needles in our arms and go nuts. <laughs> This might be where I do a little mini showcase of some of the things that Rouge finds, so... Yay! He says excitedly. More chances for me to read and pass the time. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> well, I had to show some of these off because it is technically part of the game. It's fine. It's true. And also you have picked up quite a lot of these stones. I have, so I'm going to give some to her now. Like, she's got us some items, then we're going to come back shortly and get another batch of items. Uh, we've got a poster, we have a medal, nice. And that looks like that's about it. <laughs> well, let's just say Rouge doesn't give her 110% either. Well, she's, she's on the job, she's working in exchange for these, like, stone things that we're finding her. Yeah, what, 18? Mm. Jesus. I can't remember how many there are in total, but I seem to recall it being quite a lot more than I would ever bother going out of my way to find. <laughs> you know what? I am going to Google that uh, right now to see if uh, it actually shows up. It will be somewhere, um, but... Uh... I should go and go find six more pieces of memorabilia that were mysteriously stolen and she's not just keeping in a room somewhere just to get some more white stones out of us. <laughs> Alright, that's our job done here, lads. Let's have a look inside the museum now. And it's just a menu because of course it is. Right, so apparently um, there are 192 white stones in all. However, oh. I think you only need 64 
in order to uh, get Rouge to find everything. Okay. So you could just waste your time finding extra ones for no reason if you so desired. Yeah, although apparently, I don't know if, it's, if you get all the things from Rouge, you get a, an emblem, or if you get all the white stones. Um, but... Probably both, because they are quite generous with the emblems in this game. Yeah, so it looks like, yes, uh, you do... If you want to, you know, fully complete the game, um, that's uh, what you need. Purely because after you get all of them, Rouge will disappear from that story log forever. So if you want Rouge to fuck off, this is how you do it. <laughs> well, alright then. And then, uh, at some point, um... Obviously we've seen Charmy already, and obviously that means that Espio is about. Yeah, he is. Um, but basically, um, they will tell you how many white stones remain in the area. Well, in, in, in Dream Island in tow well, all over the place, wherever. Um, mm. But basically, even after you've collected all of them, they'll stay, but they'll just tell you that there's no white stones remaining. And I did just do the trick of leave, come back, and she comes back immediately. So she didn't even need the five minutes, which are plenty this time. She just respawns there. <laughs> right, dubious. All right, so we got the Turin 2006 medal. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, my favorite. Don't know what that is. Probably a Pokemon or something. It's a mascot. Yeah, you got to have the little character to put on all the market and stuff, haven't you? Uh, especially if it's the Tokyo one. I mean, actually, let's have a look what what the uh, Tokyo 2020 uh, mascot is. Mm. Okay, because I never remember any of these. I, I know occasionally, whenever the Olympics are on, I normally take one glance at the mascot, and more often than not, my response is, this looks stupid, and then I forget about it. Yeah. Because they do get some wacky out there kind of design sometimes, so I will say that much. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you got uh, Mirai Toa, which is uh, a little sort of, sort of rabbity thingy. Um, basically styled with I or indigo blue uh, Ichimatsu pattern from the Tokyo 2020 games emblem a tribute to both the respected tradition and modern innovation in Japanese culture Mirai Toa has a personality inspired by the Japanese proverb learn from the past and develop new ideals okay uh, he's cheerful and remarkably athletic and also has a very strong sense of integrity has a special power to instantly teleport anywhere it wants huh isn't that cheating in the Olympics? <laughs> yeah, the name Mirai Toa is based on the Japanese words Mirai, meaning future, and Toa, meaning eternity. and represents the wish that through the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, a future of everlasting hope will carry on in the hearts of everyone around the world. Oh. Which is quite cute. And then the Paralympic Games mascot is Sumeiti. Um with its uh, mighty powers and cherry blossom tactile sensors, it's quite a cool character. Sumeiti can use the sensors on the sides of its head for telepathic powers, fly using its Ichimatsu pattern cape, and even move objects without touching them. Sumeiti has a calm and quiet presence, guided by great inner strength, but can display superpowers that embody the toughness and determination of the Paralympic athletes. Sumeiti loves being in nature, and can communicate with natural elements such as stones and the wind. The name Sumeiti comes from Sumeo... Sumei Yoshino, a particular type of cherry blossom, and the phrase so mighty. Sumeiti uh, can show enormous mental and physical strength and represents Paralympic athletes who overcome obstacles and redefine the boundaries of possibility. Okay. That's just really cute, and I love that a lot. I like how they just went the extra mile to, uh, to sort that out. And... Um, also, they've got a... So basically, I'm looking at the Tokyo 2020 website. And also, they've got, I think, previous mascots. Um, and sort of all their things that they've done. Including sort of, you know, the, the slightly weird alien-looking things from 2012. They were weird mascots. Yeah, like, the whole image of the 2012 Olympics were a little bit weird. Like, I still never got over that fucking 2012 logo they went with. Like, like, I'm sorry, that typography is just ugly. Yes, it's the best duo again! 
<laughs> yeah, just, just sort of subtly sliding past the fact that, you know, the 2012 logo sort of looked like uh, Lisa giving uh, Bart a blowjob. <laughs> I remember people saying that. Yes. Yeah, let's just leave that in the past where it belongs, okay? <laughs> uh, I've come back from the future again. Again for more sports. The future's terrible, Mario. Please save me. Well, you can't really have Winter Olympics in the future when everything's on fire. That's, it's just Summer Olympics or nothing, really. <laughs> I think that goes a bit further than summer. I think it's a bit hotter than that when the city's on fire. <laughs> oh lord. Alright, what are we doing again? Ice hockey. You did well, but now it's time for fever hockey. Yay! Come back from losing 30 nil. Oh! Oh, that's rough. Alright, we got Mario and we got Luigi, the classic tag team. Let's do this. Let's do this over time, because. Yeah, I mentioned this last time we did hockey. I'm not that big of a fan of this. <laughs> to be fair, like I totally appreciate that, especially considering you said how annoying this variant is. Yes, because uh, basically, if you're just trying to do your re like regular passing and hitting it in, you can make that work. But then you can also get fucked over if one of the like if the opponent's team managed to get a multiplier down and they outdo like five of your turns with one swoop yeah and sometimes like the opponent's goalie will just be such an obstinate fuck and will not let the puck in but yours oh he's like he's on a fucking tea break or something half the time yeah he's standing in for you in this like as demonstrated fucking man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like the way the goalies work is they are more likely to miss it and just lay it in if you've built up a good passing streak and it kind of alters the odds although that is the usual thing of how RNG in games feels when there is that little degree of it in that it feels like it always works in the opponent's favour I was trying to grab that and it weren't picking up for some reason I don't know why <laughs> it was just going no not letting you in um, but hey that looked like it was just gonna sort of freak out and just go nope not letting you in, sod you, you cheater! Um, and then obviously it just sort of cuts to it being fine. Yeah, once you build up a streak of four passes, then you get a guaranteed hit as long as you're aiming in the right direction. Well, that's at least something. Yeah, but again, that's the sort of thing that you might want to get a multiplier going beforehand if you want to stand a chance of overtaking easily. Yes, that is true. But hey, at least you know you've improved. Um, so from where you were, because uh, otherwise this would have been a disaster. Oh, we've still got to come back yet. We're not beating them. Not yet, but with enough persistence, I may like stand the chance. You think Silver would have more of a killer instinct, considering you know he's trying to save the future, but I guess he just didn't want the win enough. And he has fucking psychic powers. Don't forget that part. <laughs> well, much, much like the uh, the mascots that Richie spoke about, I guess there's a handicap here. <laughs> what do they have? Like one of them cages to stop the psychic powers from working? Like, does it work like phone Wi-Fi or whatever? He like must wear a stuff? silly hat. <laughs> a silly hat to contain his psychic powers. There we go. <laughs> They have to take everything into account for this Olympic game. <laughs> well, they do it that Wow, okay. Now we've gone into triple digits. Yeah, but we need to keep it up because otherwise they will fuck us over again. Well, you could always just stall for time by going behind the goal like I did when I first played the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cheating bastard. <laughs> hey, if it works, it works. And technically it's not cheating, it's just being a coward. <laughs> it's a legitimate strategy, I swear, guys. <laughs> Well, the thing is, it is actually a legitimate tactic. It pisses people off to no end, but it's a legitimate tactic, all the same. <laughs> Letting Silver blow himself up is also a legitimate tactic. <laughs> Not saving the future, also a legitimate tactic. That's it, like, he has to do his home games in his own time. <laughs> what made Luigi want to break down so much during this Olympics? I think Sonic's a bad influence, honestly. I, I agree. I suppose that they're showing he's the energetic brother, whereas Mario's just the one who goes about bopping about doing his thing. Yeah, this is before like the next two Luigi's Mansion games that crushed his spirit. <laughs> yeah, this, this is the Luigi who had only been spooked to death once. <laughs> Alright, now we can get through to the boss, and I gotta say, this one might actually count as a jump scare because it comes out of fucking nowhere. 
It counts as a jump scare if you're a fucking coward. I am! For the last time! <laughs> when are you... <laughs> also, I will say, it's not so much of a jump scare when you were able to see what the boss was when you were going on the jump pads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they did kind of spoil him ahead of time. Yeah. Also, you know, it's it's totally in the title of the uh, the part, so really, like, I mean, that was just foolish and spoilerific to begin with. It'll pro probably be different on YouTube when I give it a Christmas makeover. You don't have to do that, you know. I do. You know, that was me when I sent the videos over and all I gave you was just what level it is, and then you do your unfunny shit. <laughs> Just putting you on the spot there, it's your fault, Tom. Well, at least I get to blaze and silver as playable characters as a compromise. Yeah, we will be showing these off quite a bit over the time, so yeah. We've got the whole gang here. <laughs> oh, I just remembered Blaze does have like some playable stuff later in the next world. I was like I was trying to pinpoint where exactly she helps in the story. I know where Silver helps. It's right here in Kubi Roof, but uh yeah. Yeah, they both have their own little mini games on the overworld. Like a lot of the characters do, and that is kind of a cooler way to bring them all into it because they they could have just done like you collect more and more friends just to play in the sports with, but they did go that extra mile, which I do appreciate. Oh, definitely. So let's stop this weird psychic thingy once I've checked all these barrels because they might be interesting. Maybe no, it's just a uh, life. <laughs> The thing that makes me seem the most is when you check like four barrels in a row and there's nothing. Yeah, <laughs> they're just doing that to fuck with you. Like, is that random? Is it RNG? Uh, no, they're in set places because I did find some in me practice runs that I remembered. Most of them I forgot, which is why I go out of my way to check all of them. But, you know. <laughs> now we use Silver's fabulous psychic powers to stop things from moving from side to side. Ignoring the fact that we could have always just had, like, tails fly over there earlier on. Or, you know, just jump over it. <laughs> yeah, Sonic could run between these. Like, he's done loads of cool stunts like that before. <laughs> Ridiculous. So, this minigame, you just tap them. Wait, that's it? Yeah. The difficulty is that some of them move around and fade in and out, but, like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> wow. Oh, Quentin Flynn. I've missed your voice. Oh, wait, this wasn't Quentin Flynn at this point, was it? No, it was no, not. No, weren't this Pete Capella back yeah, then? Yeah, yeah. The OG Silver voice, and. I don't know, like, Silver's voice in 06. Well, like, it wasn't necessarily the voice I itself, it was lose. just. Yeah, it was just how overplayed a lot of the melodramatic stuff was, which I feel is part of what solidified. Silver as being a bit of a joke for a while. I mean, there were a lot of things that solidified Silver as a joke back in those days. Um, not least because, you know, the game was terrible and that was where it was introduced and that was never going to kind of bode well for anybody. Here we got another peek at the boss that's coming up. <laughs> Yeah, definitely not a jump scare, guys. Like, <laughs> look alright. Heaven forbid you watch a horror film. I. It's too scary, Richie. It's just too scary. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, I watched a parody musical of It the other day, and that was hilarious. Was it called Shit? No, it was called It the Musical. Oh, okay. Um, but basically, they just pulled. The, it was based. It was a jukebox musical that parodied the whole thing. It was brilliant. I loved it. Okay. Just imagine Pennywise singing "Ninety Nine Red Balloons." <laughs> <laughs> there were other few other sort of more clever bits and bobs, but that one just made me laugh. Meanwhile, I'm waiting for the text to actually get on with it and let me go to the bus. <laughs> yeah, it is taking its time, isn't it? Well, I wanted to talk to the guy just in case he says anything interesting, but he's just pointing out how springs work. Even though we had someone earlier tell us how the springs worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll figure it out eventually, guys. No, to be fair, we might have not talked to the shy guy. Oh boy, that is one big bullet bill, baby. Yeah, and they literally just 
call him Big Bullet Bill in this game, not Bunzai Bill or anything like that. Okay, it's the sound effect for him talking that freaks me out the most. Right. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? I'm calling you a pussy, that's what, if you're not piece this together. <sighs> He's right, but he shouldn't say it. No, I, I want like the next Olympic Games spin off. I want the fucking piano driving event now. Just make <laughs> up for it. <laughs> well, I've already dealt with that in Luigi's Mansion 3, and that was pretty hype, honestly. It was very hype. The piano itself is funny, but one of the funniest things to do with that that I remember is in Chugger's LP of Mario 64 DS when like he went in and it didn't activate and he thought it was glitched. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he turned around, then it legitimately got him. <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking beautiful. I, I keep meaning to go back and watch Trugger's stuff. I got like 10 episodes into uh, his Pokemon Black one and then I put it down. I guess like my ADHD kicked in or something. Yeah, I will say I, these days I tend not to be that great with keeping on top of Let's Plays. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I want to get around to watching and I might start and then I don't know, I just don't get around to finishing stuff. But you know. Yeah, I have to say, thankfully, since you know, I cut out a couple of people, I've managed to sort of stay pretty up to date on all of my subscriptions, which makes me very happy, because it means that then I can focus on doing other things as well, but, like, when the second you get more than a few uh, Let's Players on your list, you're just like, oh god, I've got like five videos in a day to watch, and it, that becomes too much. That's fair enough, and, um, you know, to be honest, like, I, I guess there must have been a, uh, you know, an end-off point, a cut-off point for us, where it's just like, Hellfire Commons just isn't putting in the effort anymore, I'll just cut them out, I'll unsubscribe. <laughs> it, it could just be that we're boring as shit and people got bored, so... Yeah, it was the Game Gear playthroughs, wasn't it? You can be honest. Yeah, no, that, 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 that was the end of it for me, you know? No, I'm pretty sure people would have got bored of us, like, years before that. Yeah. Uh, very true, mate. This is one of my favourite boss battles and events, honestly. I like Blazing Bob Slayer a lot. It is legitimately fun. I, like, I know, I'm a long-time Sonic fan. I like going fast. That is probably what's selling me on this, but it, just that feeling of speed is so fucking cool. And they did have a sort of fun concept along with it as well, which is always nice. Yeah, it is. Um, you get to control both the front and the back using the D-pad and the face buttons. And although I do tend to just double up on my movements, you can get that little bit of extra control like that as well, which works out really well. Nice. He doesn't look all that beat, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, he could literally just blow Sonic off the map right now. Yeah, all he's got to do is just keep going forward. In fact, how has he stopped moving? I didn't think they could do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he goes. It's like a shark, really. Like, if they stop moving, they die. Like, he, he must be, like, a special one, because normally it, the black bullet bills, they can't turn around. It's normally only the red ones that can, but he managed to turn himself completely around. Yeah, because normally the whole reason that the bullet bills sort of, you know, fire is because they're shot out of a cannon rather than acting at their own free will. So, uh, clearly, um, something incredibly weird has been going on. I think Eggman Nega has and Eggman have been doing some sort of weird, uh, how shall I put it, experiments on the bullet bills in this area. No, these, these fucking bullet bills have gone maverick now. This is like the X-Series variant. <laughs> Yay, more snow. Woo! I don't like the snow. <laughs> Still hasn't snowed around my area yet. Um, I guess it's just not cold enough right now. No, it's not snowed near me either. It did snow, I think, elsewhere in the UK. I think I saw that it snowed in Buxton um, the other day, but it's not gotten anywhere near us yet in Nottingham. Part of me is disappointed, but then also part of me is quite happy because it means that I don't have to worry about, um, you know, the ice and driving on the ice because that's not fun. I love how minutes after we're talking about how we might have got too boring, we're now talking about the fucking weather that's proven the point. We're <laughs> British, what do you expect? <laughs> we don't have to be literal stereotypes, like, I doubt me too before I started, that's me doing my work. <laughs> uh, so yep, that was QB Rump fit as a, uh, a veritable labyrinth of twists and turns, and I, I would bet good money that uh, Flame is glad to be done with it now, to move on to something a bit more freeing. 
I would be, except for the fact that we got to come back here later. <laughs> oh, darn. Oh yeah, look, there's still like cloudy parts indicating that there is more to do. Yeah, but hey, at least it's only two smallish areas in comparison to sort of the slightly larger areas that you've had in other regions that it looks like we've still got to go back to. Yes, but one of those areas is Charmy Fucking B. <sighs> well... well. <laughs> but we'll get through this guys together that's the meaning of teamwork one more last fist bump hmm. before I say goodbye to you please remember to hit that like subscribe button yeah that's right they combine the two now the, the first good decision they made in years let's have a look Chow Adventure Log 3 the Chows were intrigued and decided to follow the strangers the two strangers cross the sea to explore New Islands. To be continued. Wow. <laughs> Fucking thrilling. Like, I couldn't put it down, honestly. No, it's so gripping. It's, it's wonderful. Alright, guys, that'll do it for Cuba Renf. We'll see you next time with more White Stones in tow when we head to Ice Peak. And I got a little something to say about that, so tune in and, I don't know, enjoy, I guess. I'm not, I'm not your mom. You do what you want. <laughs> <laughs>